KZN, UKZN experts have discovered a significant increase in antibiotic-resistant bacteria in hospitals across the country. This means the drugs doctors have at their disposal are becoming less effective, which can cost lives. The WHO says antimicrobial resistance is one of the 21st century's greatest threats to health. Right now, it claims 700,000 lives a year. And if we don't take action now, that figure rises to 10 million by 2050. Professor Sabia Essek co-authored the study that's been published in prestigious health journal The Lancet. She is the South African Research Chair in Antibiotic Resistance and Professor in Pharmaceutical Sciences at UKZN. Uh, Prof, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this increase in resistance, Prof, just how great has the increase been and what's causing it? Thank you for the opportunity to discuss our research on antibiotic resistance. So, so we, we looked at um, the resistance trends in certain bacteria that are common uh, causes of hospitally acquired infection as well as community inf acquired infections over the period 2015 to 2019 in the public sector and then 2015 to 2020 in the private sector. And what we found is a statistically significant increase sometimes up to 300% in terms of the resistance to certain antibiotics that are usually reserved for multi-drug resistant um, bacteria. Now, I don't want to be uh, uh, alarmist because the total numbers of these bacteria are less than 1,500. But if you look at the exponential trajectory of the increase in resistance, this is certainly a cause of concern. Um, we also found as, as part of the study that the, um, in, in the public sector, the um, purchase or the procurement of reserve antibiotics, that is those antibiotics that are used specifically for multi-drug resistant infections, have increased dramatically by almost more than 650%. Um, so whereas in 2015 we were, we were using or buying 55,000 doses or 55,000 um, uh, 55, doses in 2019, this has escalated to more than 400,000 doses of the reserve antibiotic meropenem. So just to, to, answer your, to, to answer your question in terms of how does this happen, so resistance um, occurs when bacteria no longer respond to the antibiotics that previously killed them and cured the infection. And resistance occurs is, is, is called a function of time and use. The greater the quantities of antibiotics that we use and the longer the time for which they are used, the greater the likelihood of resistance emerging. This is called selection pressure. Uh, uh, Prof, I know you said you don't want to be alarmist, but I'm quite alarmed actually. So uh, you're saying our, our first and second choice antibiotics uh, to, to fight bacteria are becoming less effective. Our reserve antibiotics are being uh, called into use more often. What happens when the reserve antibiotics uh, start to become ineffective? So that's, that's the scary part of it. Um, and, it's, and it's scary because the vast majority of, of um, pharmaceutical companies that used to undertake research and development into antibiotic, uh, antibiotics, new antibiotics, have actually um, seized or stopped the research and development into these areas. Um, and that's because um, um, it's just not an adequate return of investment, especially if the new antibiotics are going to be most likely in the reserve um, category. And resistance to in antibiotics is in inevitable. Um, and so we currently rely on small biotechs and academic institutions for research, but really it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to um, uh, sustain the interest in uh, antibiotic drug development. Is this a problem so, that's... So what we need... Sorry, Prof, please Sorry, continue. go ahead. No, please continue. No. Um, it is, I, I think your next question was whether it's only a problem in South Africa yeah. or whether it's a global problem, correct? Yeah, actually, it's a global problem. Um, antimicrobial resistance, as you mentioned in your introduction, has been on the uh, top 10 global public health priorities that is published by the World Health Organization annually. And it had been sustainably on this list for the past several years. Um, and then resistance, mechanism, resistance actually is, exists to every single antibiotic that is used in human health, in animal health, and antibiotics are even used in crops and plants. So it's just a normal process of evolution. 
And similar resistance mechanisms have been reported all over the world. So let me give you an example. The new Delhi metallobetalactamase is an enzyme that breaks down the reserve carbapenem antibiotics. This was first reported in India, and it was thought to spread from the Indian subcontinent all over the world. But even where there's been no um, uh, fallback to India, we found this type of resistance emerging all over the world, including in South Africa. And, and my research found it in cystic fibrosis patients that had not been hospitalized, that had not been to India, had not been in contact with any person from the Indian subcontinent or a traveler to the Indian subcontinent. So really, it's how much we use and how long we use it for that causes the selection pressure for resistance to emerge. And we're not alone in this, and that is why we really need to make sure that we take every um, precaution and effort to prevent it escalating further. Well, Prof, you're saying it's, it's a global problem and it's, and it's growing, but pharmaceutical companies aren't that interested, or big pharma isn't that interested because the profit margins are small. So where's the solution coming from then? So the solution is, is twofold. First of all, if we prevent infection, so the lower the incidence of infection, the lesser the need for antibiotics and the lesser the selection pressure for resistance to emerge, and in our day-to-day -day lives, it's simple hygiene practices that would prevent in infection. For example, washing our hands before and after using the toilet, washing our hands before and after preparing and eating food, coughing or sneezing into our elbows or using a tissue. And, in and that's more of, of what we can do in the community setting. In hospitals, it's you know stringent infection prevention and control, washing hands, using personal protective um, equipment, uh, etc. And the, second, and the second way is, is something called antimicrobial stewardship, um, where antibiotics are prescribed based on microbiological tests, or antibiotic, we, we define, we identify what the bacteria is causing the infection, and then we determine what antibiotics the bacteria is susceptible to. And these are routine tests that are done in all microbiology laboratories. And this will allow us to choose, to, or to ensure that the right antibiotic is given at the right dose at the right time for the right length of time. And this is called the four R's of antimicrobial stewardship. We've also found that preventing infection by vaccination, for example, with the pneumococcal vaccine, which has been in use for several years, as well as the typhoid vaccine, um, has really uh, uh, prevented these infections and reduced the use of antimicrobials um, or antibiotics for that. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time. Very informative. We appreciate it. Professor Sabir Esek of the University of KZN.